Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's questions answer video, dual or single tube for night vision? This is an expensive question, and my answer is actually, unfortunately, for some people, gonna be a little bit more expensive. I prefer dual tube night vision. I have two peepers, so I want two night vision devices. There are very, very few drawbacks to running a dual system. Once we get away from cost, that's gonna be the biggest drawback, especially if you're you know, paying for this out of your own pocket for your own personal use versus occupationally speaking, where you're in a decision-making position where you can order your team or whatever night vision. Uh, dual's where it's at. Uh, it gives you back a lot of your depth perception um, and the fact that I get, now get both of my eyes now have night vision capabilities. The military historically has used um, once they got away from the sevens into the PVS-14, a monocular. And part of that reason was someone in the Pentagon thought it was a good idea. And another part of that reason is simply comes down to cost. Night vision is going to be expensive no matter if you're buying in bulk or not. There's never been a significant advantage to running a monocular over binocular style night vision other than being able to better really readily read lighting conditions when someone hasn't been provided with basic training. And I don't mean basic training in the strictest sense of the word or the term, colloquial term, if you will, is used in the military is where people go to get their, their entry level training. But when I was trained in, the night, uh, trained in the military with night vision, I was handed a PVS-14, told I was responsible for it, it was a sensitive item, I had to dummy cord it to something, and that was my training. Uh, everything else was OJT. I had to lean on senior NCOs to kind of learn from them about how night vision worked and what it did and what it didn't do. And, if I really was invisible while wearing it, which I found out pretty quickly I wasn't, um, reduced visibility maybe, and I do have a distinct advantage under operating under night vision depending on the environment that I'm in, but the monocular wasn't gonna turn me into Superman. And then you get into lasers and integration with sighting systems and things like that, which is a totally different topic. But at the basic level, even my senior NCOs were like, I never really get taught how to use this. I kind of just figured it out on my own. And these are guys that were coming from the much, much older dinosaur era, if you will, of night vision to where I was with this new PVS-14 with an Omni tube, and this thing is amazing. Uh, if you look at where we progress to now, monoculars are kind of going away for the most part. Now you're seeing way, way more dual tube systems or even, you know, the panos, which are for much wider field of view. Um, but duals are pretty much the standard for people who use night vision, oper quote unquote, operationally. Uh, so it's where you want to be. Unfortunately, it's going to cost you an additional amount of money. Um, you're going to pay twice the price from what you would for monocular, and then you have to get special bridges and mounting. And then there's, well, what system do I get? And what helmet do I get? What mount do I use? Um, and those are questions based on, one, what your budget is. Uh, two, do you want to buy the same product four times to finally get one that works? Um, and three, what are you going to do with it? The most inexpensive way to get into dual tube night vision is two PVS-14s. Uh, pick up two PVS-14s, uh, send them to someone like Mod Armory or TNVC, have them culminated so that they work together. Um, they do their, their mad science and make sure you don't get a migraine or you don't have um, some contrast or some brightness issues based on settings. Uh, and then you're able to use a PVS-14 bridge to bring those two things together. Um, weight's gonna be significantly heavier than a dedicated system such as like a, a, a PVS-15, or if somehow you manage to get a hold of them, 31s. The problem with those units besides cost is, depending on where they come from, you may not technically supposed to have them, and their serviceability is somewhat limited. Uh, there's not a lot you can do um, outside of like, people who just know mad scientist tricks to repair certain things that break inside of, say, a 15, even a set of VDs, um, and 31s is the same. So, and again, you're looking at considerably more cost for something like that versus what you can get into for a set of dual um, green phosphor uh, 14s. So this is pretty much um, my go-to right here. Uh, these are Mod Armory Vipers, uh, and they have the Photonis 4G white phosphor tubes in them. Now, there's a big discussion over is white phosphor better than green phosphor. It depends on who you ask. If you ask me, I'm gonna say yes. I feel like I get more contrast, more clarity, and I can read lighting conditions better with the white phosphor tubes versus what I'm used to with the green phosphor. I feel like I can read shadows better, just general lighting conditions, gradients, things like that, much better with white phosphor than I can with green phosphor. 
Uh, as far as tubes go, the, four, the Photonis tubes are a little bit more on the expensive side, but they are pretty much light safe within reason. Uh, so that's definitely a big advantage, given that most environments that you're going to use night vision in, unless you're out in the woods or out in the middle of the desert on a range that's light controlled, uh, there's going to be some ambient lighting that could potentially damage your night vision through ex extended use. And some of the devices you use on firearms, such as white lights, um, can reflect back and cause issues with your tubes, and you definitely don't want that. Now they are the Viper bodies, which are similar to a PVS-14 body in design, and I'm not going to get too much into the specifics about that. Um, and then they're kept together with a bridge. This bridge is a integrated, integrated systems components, um, and it's an awesome little bridge. Now when it comes to your arm, um, I'm a Wilcox fan. Uh, the, the other major player is Nerodos. Uh, and it really is like a Coke versus Pepsi situation. Some people are going to feel one is superior to the other. Uh, as far as helmets go, I like a ballistic one because I teach classes where people have live firearms and are night vision, so I'm always going to be wearing a ballistic helmet. Uh, and two, depending on the weight of the night vision you're putting on it, the ballistic helmet is going to eliminate the need for a counterweight that you're going to see on some of your bump helmets. Bump helmets are great for just general throw on, go out and use my night vision for whatever. Um, but they, they're not the best for long-term wear. Uh, and if you're taking a class or you're going to use these around firearms, especially around other people wearing night vision and shoot houses or on ranges or something like that, I highly suggest getting yourself into a good ballistic helmet. This is the MTEC, uh, the Flux Ballistic, which is great. Um, it defaults to MLOC, so you can use MLOC accessories in the rail systems. And then I like to use the, and again, this isn't quite the topic of the video, but the, just because I'm standing here holding it and somebody might ask, um, uh, MSA Swordens Ear Pro, best Ear Pro ever uh, for non communications based Ear Pro. And then I use the Unity Tactile Mark and Sarah system so I can fold my Ear Pro out of the way when I don't need it and fold it right into place when I do need it. Now, there are a few things in life that'll make you feel sillier than wearing a night vision ballistic helmet indoors when there's no need for it at all. Um, because this thing only looks sexy in posed photographs or under low light conditions. Uh, I put it on to kind of go back to the point of dual versus single. Um, when I have just a monocular, uh, my other eye is not covered by a night vision device, so it's pretty easy for me to read lighting conditions just by opening that eye if it is in fact closed. With duals, um, one of the things that people bring up is, well, because both your eyes are behind the night vision, you can't readily read lighting conditions. And my, my answer to that is, I can do this, or I can do this, or I can do this. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out pretty quickly that those things are optional. Um, I'm also a big fan of bridges that allow me to do that because I don't like to flip my night vision up if I don't have to. Uh, using the, their system bridge, I can easily just roll my stuff out of the way. Or if I'm going to white light, I can just completely clear them, do what I got to do, and at any time I need to, I can go back to reset to the same position, good to go. And then if I really, really don't need them, fold them up out of the way. So that's kind of my answer on duels versus singles. It is more expensive, but don't use that as a justification for not getting duels if you can afford them. Uh, and my personal philosophy on, on being able to afford things. Um, honestly, if I didn't teach night vision classes or use night vision um, uh, as much as I did, I probably wouldn't own the Gucci kit that I do have, if you want to use the term Gucci kit. Uh, I'd probably just use two dual green phosphor uh, 14s, but I wanted white phosphor. I wanted the best I could get in what I wanted, and this is what I ended up with. Are there better systems out there? Wow, is that a argument or a point of contention? Um, there's two sides of the, well actually there's probably more sides than two to the argument of what night vision is the best night vision and what you absolutely have to have and what laser system you should be using and where you mount it on your rifle and, and, and these are things I can address in future videos but um, there is no central clearinghouse of knowledge on night vision. It's very hard to learn things that are factually based. Um, uh, of course that's true of almost anything in the firearm world. Uh, from the internet. So you got to do a lot of digging and a lot of source. But since you're going to spend quite a bit of money on night vision, it would behoove you to do as much research as possible and talk to people who've used night vision um, occupationally because they're the ones that have the most ex experience with it. A guy who owns night vision, who shoots with it on his property, isn't going to have the same contextual experience as someone who used night vision operationally on missions in Iraq or Afghanistan or a law enforcement officer who's been using it for you know, uh, anti-poaching operations, or a law enforcement officer uses it for SWAT operations, or what have you. So 
experiences where night vision, uh, experience in night vision really, really counts because people are going to have different ways of approaching things. Some people are still really big on a monocular. One thing I've consistently observed with people who use monoculars, especially in like my night vision classes is uh, they lose their spatial awareness much faster and they're not aware of it. It's not that they're lost, it's just they don't know they're lost yet. I've had students where I've literally been like, hey man, get behind cover, get behind cover, and he'll be screaming at me, I'm behind cover. And I'll be like, all right, stop, lower your rifle, take a look around. And he'll be like, ooh. And he's like four or five feet from the piece of cover he swore and he was yelling at me about that he was behind when in fact he wasn't anywhere near it because he lost his spatial awareness during navigation from point A to point B while trying to accomplish another task. Uh, not a huge deal because literally it's standing behind a VTAC shooting a steel plate or whatever, uh, but also a huge deal depending on what you're going to use your night vision for. So back to two peepers, two tubes. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.